So we're on to part three, balancing chemical equations in our short series here of chemical reactions. I'm going to have to give you quite a bit of background knowledge and then some tools to help you with the chemical reactions. If you're still struggling with skeleton equations, make sure you go back and look at part two. If you're still having trouble naming ionic and covalently bonded compounds and uh, molecules, then you'll have to go back to part one or maybe even prior to that. So just some quick background information. Um, we have to balance chemical equations because they must show that matter is neither created nor destroyed. This is a law of conservation of mass, conservation of matter. In fact, one of the steps that I'm going to give you shows that we have to show that the mass of reactants is equal to the mass of the products every single time. If we haven't done this, then we know that our answer is not yet correct. Once we've done this, we know our answer is correct. So these are what I think are the seven simple steps for balancing chemical equations using the tree method, also called the T method, probably called a lot of different things. I like the tree method. It sounds organic. makes it sound a little bit entertaining. Um, I'm going to go through each of these steps and examples, but just so you know, the first thing, we have to be able to write the skeleton equation, and that's what we did in part two. We need to show the physical states. Is it a solid? Is it a gas? Is it a liquid? Is it aqueous? We need to check for diatomics. You'll need to refresh on where the diatomics are. They exist here on the periodic table. There are seven of them, and they form the number seven with the goofy hydrogen over here. Then we're going to draw in for number two a trunk of the tree. Um, you'll understand what that means. Then we're going to write down how many elements we have of each. We're going to change the coefficients. So coefficients are the number in front of a variable. And then we're going to write the coefficients in the lowest possible ratio. We're going to check our work, just like I said on the last slide. And then I always encourage this one. If you can do this stuff, I'm convinced that you're one of a handful of people in the whole world that can understand chemical equations and then understand how to balance them. It's pretty complex stuff, so you should be quite proud of yourself when you get to the point where you can do these very easily. Let's start off with a relatively easy example. We've got in water, iron 3 chloride reacts with sodium hydroxide, producing solid iron 3 hydroxide and sodium chloride. So it might look daunting, but it's not. We just need to break it down. And we need to do our seven simple steps, which I've included down here at the bottom. First thing, we need to write the skeleton equation. So I've got iron 3 chloride up here. It doesn't say iron monochloride, iron trichloride. It doesn't have any of those prefixes, which means it's ionically bonded and I need to look up the oxidation states for each of them on my periodic table. So I know we've got iron. When I look it up on my periodic table, it has an oxidation state of 2 or 3. But it's showing me right here I have to use 3+. plus. And then chlorine, I look it up on the periodic table, it's got an oxidation state of 1 minus. To balance these out, I need to have three of those chlorines to even out that plus 3 charge over there on the iron. So I've got Fe. CL3. Then it says it reacts with sodium hydroxide plus reacts with sodium hydroxide. This sodium hydroxide does not say monodiatri, any of those things, so I need to look them all up on the periodic table to find their oxidation states. Sodium is 1 plus, hydroxide is one of those polyatomic ions, just need to remember those, and it is OH minus. Again, on the back of the periodic table, or you can find those resources elsewhere. They cancel each other out, and I've got NaOH. Now, it says that those react together to produce solid iron 3 hydroxide. Now, one thing you'll notice is I'm leaving these um, states off for just a second, and I'll come back and I'll check those right down here, and, and we'll put them back on wanted to leave them off just so we could get this equation put together. We'll worry about the states in just a second, but normally I'll put them in as we're working through. So we're producing solid iron 3 hydroxide. Iron 3 means we have iron 3 plus hydroxide. We looked it up before. It was OH minus. Now to get these to even out, and I'm going to have to erase these just to fit my parentheses in there, that means we need to have three of those hydroxides to even out that positively charged iron. Then the last one is sodium chloride, so plus sodium is Na, it's 1 plus, and chlorine is 1 minus on the periodic table, so these even out. Now, 
We've done the skeleton equation, but we have not shown the physical states. So let's show the physical states of each. It says in water, and then it doesn't say anything else through the rest of this top of this line. It means all of it's happening in water, which means each of these is aqueous. Aqueous. And then over here, we've got producing solid iron. So we've got solid and sodium chloride. It doesn't say that it's anything other than a solid, so now we've got those filled out. And I'm sort of going to start to run out of room here, but let's see if I can fill out the trunk of the tree. So next step here, the trunk of the tree. I always put it right here underneath my arrow, and I need to fill out all of the elements in the trunk of the tree and then the number of each. So if I look over here on this side, I've got iron, Fe, I've got a chlorine, Cl, I've got a sodium, Na, and I've got an oxygen and a hydrogen. But that oxygen and hydrogen are a hydroxide, and they're together on this side as well. So I can actually keep those together in here. Then I need to write down how many I have. I have one iron over here, I have three chlorines, I have one sodium, and I have one hydroxide. On this side, I have one iron. If I find chlorine over here, I have one chlorine. When I look at sodium, I have one, and hydroxide, I have three of them. So I'm not balanced. I need to work my way down through here. I've got one iron on this side, one iron on this side. I'm good with the irons. The chlorines, I'm not. I've got three on one side and one on the other. So I need to go in here and add something. I can put a three in front of the sodium chloride, which gives me three chlorines on this side. But it also changes the number of sodiums I have to three. Now I go back to the top of my tree every time, or the trunk of my tree, and I work my way down. The irons are fine, the chlorines are fine, but now the sodiums aren't. I've got three on this side, and I've got one on this side. So let me go back to where the sodiums are. If I put a three here, now I change this to three sodiums, and I change the number of hydroxides, so now I've got three hydroxides. I go back to the top of the trunk of my tree and make sure everything checks out. I've got one and one of iron, I've got three and three of chlorine, I've got three and three of uh, sodium, and three and three of hydroxide. So I have just changed all the coefficients. There is no other ratio that will work for this in the basic way that we're looking at it. And I've checked my work already, which means I get to move on to number seven, which is always important because you have successfully completed a balanced chemical equation. Again, here's the tools that we're using. Got to have your periodic table with you, and you need to have your list of polyatomic ions as well so you can keep track of these. Let's try another one. We've got solid aluminum and hydrochloric acid react to form solid aluminum chloride and hydrogen gas. This might look familiar from earlier, so let's go ahead and fill this out. Okay, so we've got aluminum. And it says that we've got solid aluminum. And one thing that throws up a red flag, aluminum is all by itself. Anytime I have an element by itself, I need to figure out, is this a diatomic? Does there need to be two aluminums, or can it live by itself? It's not one of my diatomics, so aluminum can live by itself. So I'm good to go with the aluminum. Then hydrochloric acid, you've got to remember how to name these. We've got HCl. Then reacts to form, reacts to form. Aluminum chloride, it doesn't say mono, di, tri, any of those, which means this is ionically bonded. I've got aluminum, Al, 3 plus, I looked it up on the periodic table, and Cl, chlorine, is 1 minus. So I need Al, Cl3 to even those out. Then it says I've also gas, so hydrogen, gas. Now, I have purpose, purposefully left a few things off of here. We'll come back and check those. But I want to look at this hydrogen. Hydrogen's all by itself, and it is one of my diatomics. So it needs to be H2. So I've drawn out my skeleton equation. I have not shown all the physical states, so I need to do that. I've got this hydrochloric acid. Hydrochloric acid and all acids are aqueous, so I need to include that. It says I made solid aluminum chloride, so I'm going to put a S here for solid. And then I do have it for the hydrogen gas. 
Um, I'm going to switch colors here for the trunk of the tree. Put my trunk of my tree right here. I'm going to then write all of the elements. I've got aluminum, I've got hydrogen, and I've got chlorine to deal with here. So I need to write the number of elements for each one of those. Over here I have one aluminum, I have one hydrogen, I have one chlorine. This side I have one aluminum, I have two hydrogens, and I have three chlorines. So my aluminums are not balanced out. Let's grab a different color here so we can work through these. Um, I'm sorry, my aluminums are, my hydrogens are not. I need more hydrogen over here. So if I put a 2 here to try to balance this out, it's also going to change my chlorines down here to a 2. When I go back up here, my aluminums are good, my hydrogens are good, but my chlorines are not. So I need to get more chlorine on the reactant side of my equation over here. Now one thing that's going to start to happen is I could keep adding and adding and adding and I'm eventually going to get up to a common multiplier. I have an odd number over here and I have an even number over here. Oftentimes one trick that will help you out with that is to um, multiply those two together. That gives you a common multiplier. When we do that I get 6. So let's see what that does. If I come back over here and erase the 2 that I initially put here and I put a 6 because I think that might be the common multiplier. I need to go back and fix my hydrogens. I don't have two hydrogens over in here over here now. I have six and I don't have two chlorines. I have six chlorines. I go back up to my aluminums. They're fine. My hydrogens are not. I can put a three in front of this hydrogen because three times two, three times two is six. Now my hydrogens are evened out, but my chlorines are not. So I need six chlorines. I have to put a two here because two times this three is going to give me six. And I need to fix my aluminums. So I come back up and change that to a two. And now I'm still not done because my aluminums are not balanced out. So I look back at the reactant side and I see I've got aluminum all by itself. And I can easily make this a two and that a two. And now it looks like I'm good. I've changed the coefficients for four. Um, the lowest ratio, this one is in its lowest ratio, although it can be simplified if we used fractions. We're not going to worry about that right now. We have checked our work. We've got 266, 266 over here, which means finally we're done. We get to smile. And we have one more example if you want to see it. Okay. Solid zinc and aqueous hydrogen sulfate react to produce hydrogen gas and aqueous zinc sulfate. So I'm going to run through this one quickly. We've got solid zinc. Zinc, all by itself. We see something by itself. We need to say, is it a polyatomic ion? It's not. So this zinc can live all by itself. That says S for solid. I apologize. Then we've got aqueous hydrogen sulfate. Um, hydrogen sulfate, we've got hydrogen which is 1 plus, and sulfate is a polyatomic ion on the back. We're going to find out it's SO4, 2 minus. So this 2 has to come down here. Those two even out. We've got zinc and hydrogen sulfate. This is aqueous. Um, this is also an acid. We'll go back to the naming for acids if you're struggling with that one. And then these react to produce hydrogen gas. So we've got hydrogen, gas. And remember, we have an element all by itself. We need to find out, is it diatomic? We look. Hydrogen is, has to be H2, plus aqueous zinc sulfate. And we need to look up the oxidation state for zinc and for sulfate and see how they turn out. We find out zinc is 2 plus, sulfate is 2 minus. We know that from before. So ZnSO4 does work. I, sorry, I apologize for the writing here. Um, we then need to work our way down through here. And I'm going to do that rather quickly because we've set this one up to be relatively um, doable here. Just switch color. We've got zinc. We've got hydrogen, 
And notice we've got this sulfate over here and a sulfate over there. I can keep those together. So I'm going to put SO4 right here. We've got one zinc, we've got two hydrogens, and we've got one SO4. On the other side, we've got um, one zinc, we've got two hydrogens, and we've got one SO4. So it looks like, as we work our way down through here, everything checks out. We don't have any coefficients, so it must be in the lowest pop possible ratio. We check our work, we've got one, two, one, one, two, one. Fantastic. This is a balanced chemical equation. We can now smile. So good luck with these. Uh, the more you do, the better you will become. So practice makes perfect on balancing chemical equations. It's going to be especially valuable when we move into learning about moles, um, molarity, and especially when we get into stoichiometry. So these steps are just going to be the very beginning of what we do when we move on through the next units. So good luck, and we'll come back later. We'll talk about part four and how to recognize different types of reactions and also how to start writing out those reactions from word equations. So good luck.